welcome to another episode of Inside CU Sports. I'm Sheldon Dossett, and today's first guest is Amanda Gabehart, fourth year cheer and third year this will be uh, dance coach. Yes. Amanda, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, discuss your background a little bit with, with cheer. Uh, I know you're a Campbellsville alum, mm -hmm. so uh, take us back a little bit if you don't mind. Okay. Um, yeah, I did cheer at Campbellsville University for uh, two years. Uh, going back quite a bit further. Um, I started out as a dancer here locally um, for my school. So I danced until seventh grade and also did a lot of tumbling during that time. Um, and then from eighth grade forward, um, I was a cheerleader, uh, which led to my two years here at Camels University as a cheerleader. How would you describe your coaching style when it comes to cheer and dance? And mm -hmm. do they differentiate at all? Or do you carry over a lot of philosophies between the two? Um, I feel like my philosophy remains the same, and it really varies. Um, I think it depends on um, the day, the week, the season, um, and the athletes that I have on my team. Um, I have to look at everything from several different uh, standpoints, and sometimes my kids understand that and sometimes they don't. Um, I'm not a real bossy coach. Um, I'm not overly demanding. I don't feel like I am. Um, one philosophy that I have is to always try to make sure that their mental health is taken care of when they come in uh, to practice or a game because if they're in another place either with their academics or their relationships then there's only so much that I can expect out of them and I try not to expect too much. I hope that doesn't sound terrible but it just depends on the athlete um, and where they are. Um, I try to make sure that open communication um, is always something that they're comfortable with with me um, so they know where I'm coming from as I coach them, um, but also where they're at in their life, in their journey at Camelsville. Yeah, I'm glad, uh, especially mental health is something mm -hmm. that I'm uh, very much an advocate for as well, so mm -hmm. that's, that's great to hear. And I, I think that leads to my next sort of point. Um, the difference between when you were a, a cheerleader and then now, th there is an increased emphasis and spotlight on mental health. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you can compare and contrast between your time as a student athlete and then now the student athletes in cheer and dance? Um, I think the practices um, and the competition has increased a lot. The demands that we have just to be competitive within our, um, our conference have increased a lot um, and then I also just think with um, kids students in general with social media there's just a lot more pressure uh, and a lot of times their mental health can be affected um, by comments or you know sometimes as a coach you deal with a little drama within your team and a lot of times it's come from a snapchat um, a group chat that they have and to be honest when I was a student athlete at Campbellsville um, there was no Snapchat. Uh, Facebook had just started, so social media wasn't huge. We weren't on there a whole lot. Um, but I just think that there's a lot more pressure um, with the photos, with the comments, and it's a lot different these days than it was back then. Sure. We mentioned at the beginning, it's this will be the third season for the dance uh -huh. team, and you were instrumental in the creation of the program. Can you kind of discuss that a bit, what that process was like getting a program started here at CU? Um, I think already having some experience with cheer the previous year helped me to know what I was really going to be responsible for um, because the, of course there was no outline for me, this is what we need to do. Um, bare minimum of instructions of this is what you have to do. So it was kind of up to me to figure it out. Um, and honestly my first year as a cheer coach I kind of had to figure out a lot on my own. I didn't make it through a full season um, as an assistant coach before um, I took over the program as head coach. So it was kind of similar. I'll be honest it was a couple of years of a whole lot of work, um, but I learned very quickly and I caught on very quickly. I have tons of coaching experience in general, but at a collegiate level, it's just very different. Like the recruiting is different. Um, the responsibilities that I have now are way different than when I coach youth or middle school or, or high school. You know, there's recruiting, there's um, helping with their financial aid, there's the mental health. Um, these kids come from all different backgrounds, different schools, different programs. Um, and so we just have to always work together when we come in at the beginning of the season and try to figure out what we need to do together as a team. Um, and I honestly let my kids a lot at the beginning of the season kind of 
help set goals for the year uh, based upon their talent or uh, previous years competitively what we've done but dance was a little challenging uh, but we were able to succeed greatly that right. first year yeah that's what I was about to bring up the yeah. very first year mid-south conference champions yes. and then last year runner-up what does continued success look like for the dance program and do they the student athletes that are on the dance team, I'm sure they have high expectations themselves. Yes, they do. Um, to be honest, last year getting runner up versus the very first year that we had started, we were uh, you know, the champions of Mid-South. Um, it was a little tough for them, um, but the past few years, they just work really, really well together as a team. Um, and as coaches, we just do all that we can to make sure that they're prepared for that competition. Um, there's not as many dance teams in our conference as there are cheer teams. Mm -hmm. um, there's 11 cheer teams currently, and then we compete against four for dance. So honestly, the competition is a little bit less for dance just because there's a lot of programs that haven't started yet. Yeah. Um, but now schools are kind of investing in dance programs and mm -hmm. pursuing that. But um, cheer's been around a little bit longer uh, for both game day and competitive cheer. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a whole lot more competition for dance. I mean, sorry, for cheer. Mm -hmm. um, Going into this uh, competitive seasons coming up, mm -hmm. cheer and dance rosters, how are they looking? What are the in incoming freshmen? Um, what are their expectations? I'm sure that they're aware of the pre prior success of the teams. So mm -hmm. um, how, uh, how's the forecast? Um, well, we're looking really good. Um, in both cheer and dance, I feel like the difficulty scores that we need to have are greater than they have been in the previous seasons. Um, so that's always good. A lot of people don't really understand cheer or dance or how we compete or what it consists of, um, but basically we have skill levels that we need to meet. Um, and based upon the increased skill levels and then the execution of the routine, that's our total score. And then of course the other teams are doing the same thing. So best score wins. Mm -hmm. Well, you just returned from maternity leave, so congratulations on, you. on your newborn. Um, Coach Laura Day, she was able to kind of operate in your stead. I'm sure that was hugely instrumental to the, yes. to the process that you had to go through in the off season here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Laura did a fantastic job. Um, she has been my assistant since 2019, I think. That first year I came in, I was just cheer coach, and then that, that following year when I added dance, um, she has been my assistant ever since. So luckily, she's gotten a few years in of being my assistant and kinda has a good idea of everything that goes on. Um, maternity leave happened really quick, fast in a hurry, mm -hmm. faster than I had imagined, um, but Laura was ready to tackle everything that she needed to do. Um, in the summer months, we have a lot of extra stuff that people probably don't know that we're doing, um, just getting our kids ready for the upcoming season. Um, and so she did a fantastic job. Well, best of luck and again, congratulations. Thank you. And we will be right back with more Inside CU Sports. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now, I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us, too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Our fight against coronavirus isn't over. We still have to slow the spread and do our part. Let's wear face masks in public. Stay six feet or more from others. Follow state and local guidelines. Wash our hands frequently and stay home when we feel safe. For ourselves, for our loved ones, for our future. Let's move forward together. Learn more at coronavirus.gov. Thank you. Thank you. Just because we're being healthy at home and practicing good social distancing doesn't mean we have to lock ourselves away and throw away the key. You can still get up and stay active, not only for our physical health, but for our mental health as well. Maybe it's time to pick up running again. 
or you can take the dogs for a walk. And with all the barber shops and salons being closed, right now seems to be a good time to learn to cut your own hair. But no matter what you do, make sure you have fun. And for more information on what Camels University is doing in our battle against COVID-19, visit camelsville.edu. Welcome back to Inside CU Sports. With me now is Shannon Wathen, head softball coach in her 19th season. Shannon, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, of course. You're a Campbellsville graduate and you were a student athlete in basketball here. Is there anything that you think that you glean on from your time as a basketball specific um, athlete that you utilize in your day-to-day -day softball coaching? Absolutely. I think, you know, I played here uh, from 94 to 98 for Coach Wise, who's the winningest female coach in the state of Kentucky, and uh, I was about to receive a huge honor, and, uh, and Ginger, uh, Coach Colvin was an assistant at that time and helped, and, um, you know, I think that we're all kind of cut from the same cloth a little bit in uh, the things that she taught us and instilled in us as, as student athletes and, uh, you know, our will to be successful and, um, you know, just uh, to prepare these kids for, you know, graduation and to excel both academically and athletically and uh, be successful in the classroom and on the field. So, you know, that's really something that, um, you know, a lot of my coaches have taught me, but probably my time here uh, has really instilled a lot of those values in, in, in me and my coaching. Softball preseason, how's it going? Uh, pretty good. We've been going about four uh, to six weeks right now. We're, we'll finish up this week, and um, we've been able to get in a couple scrimmages, unlike the um, you know last couple of years with the, with COVID and things like that. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of young faces. We with with us having super seniors, we've got some kids uh, student teaching and in master's program. So that's been a little bit different with how we're handling scheduling and things like that. But um, you know, we've been pretty fortunate to be able to get on the field and uh, we're running our JV season right now as well. So they're getting to play some games and travel a little bit. So just a lot going on uh, in this fall. Fall's really an opportunity for us to teach and um, kind of instill some of the drills and things that we're going to be working on uh, in the direction that we will go uh, and kind of a lot of time to just kind of evaluate and see what we have. So a lot of video and just discussion and, and things like that. So just a good opportunity to really build your foundation for the direction you're going to go in the spring. You've had scrimmages against EKU, Moorhead State. What are have been the impressions from those games? You know, we've come out and, um, you know, we've had, you know, a couple good innings. And then uh, both games we've had one kind of bad inning where we've imploded a little bit. Um, defensively and uh, but you know we've, we've held our own in some situations um, you know we don't really keep a lot of stats or do a lot of things in that in those so you know we're, we're running kids in and out it's kind of free substitution type deal and getting a chance to see some th people and evaluate and kind of see where everybody stands so um, you know so we've we've played both of those teams and we've been able to get everybody that has traveled on those dates into the ball games with us um, you know, we're playing 10 inning games, so we've got some pitchers that are throwing four or five innings and then three and then two. So we're able to video everything during those uh, games and, and come back and look at some things and hopefully be able to correct a few things. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like it always is. We do some things good and we, we have some things and see some things that we really need to work on to get better and, um, you know, try to make a run for conference championship in the spring. Of course. Season starts in Florida in, in February. Between now and then, it's about four months, um, what will you be, all be working on that maybe that you've seen or um, in the scrimmages or preseason? Well, once we get through this week, we'll shut down for a week and then um, we'll be on fall break two days. Uh, and then we will hit the big part of our weightlifting and conditioning. And I think those things are really valuable with, uh, you know, we play a 50 to 60 game schedule, uh, 56 games to be exact. And um, that's just regular season. So then your postseason added on. So, you know, I think that is a, a really important part of our success. And then the kids will have some opportunities to work on some things on their own and, and do a few things there. But that's where our main focus will be uh, during that time. And, um, you know, hopefully they'll they'll put the work in and, and get themselves in good shape and we'll be ready to go come January. You're returning two starting arms. What are the expectations for? You know, we have uh, Carson Williams, who will be a fifth year senior, who had her best year uh, last year. And then Katie Chadwell, who was an all-conference performer, uh, was a 20-game winner, uh, was a COVID freshman mm -hmm. uh, last year and came out and did a really good job. Uh, Courtney Patterson uh, will be a sophomore as well. She didn't get as many innings last year. She's looking really good. 
um, this fall. So all three of them are, you know, continue to work hard and get better. I think the biggest thing uh, with Katie and Carson is now that teams have seen them, you know, where are they going to be better at this year? Where What are we going to improve on uh, through the winter? What pitch have we added? Uh, what pitch is a little bit better that maybe we didn't utilize as much last year? So, and I think getting in, in great shape and being able to go out and uh, throw back-to-back -back days because with our conference uh, series, pitchers are throwing you know, back-to-back -back games within or days within less than 24 hours. So that's always a challenge in and of itself. So, um, you know, I thought that they had phenomenal years last year and hopefully we'll get, you know, a, a great portion of innings out of all three of them and be able to split up a little bit more this year. I hope all three of them are, are going to be able to throw for us and be effective. Yeah. Speaking of phenomenal years last year, Riley Whitney, uh, Mid-South Conference Softball Player of the Year, NCCAA Player of the Year, what are her expectations for this upcoming season her fifth year you know she's a, she's a fifth year kid and she's been around our program even before she decided to come here and and with camps and things like that so it's I feel like she's been here forever and uh, we're fortunate that she's uh, decided to come back for her fifth year and um, you know she's actually one that is student teaching right now so we've not we, we see her some this fall and she's making practices in the afternoons but uh, you know she's got her plate pretty full with that and trying to focus on getting through uh, just the student teaching aspect of that right now but we're excited to have her back she's a leader for us behind the plate on and off the field really and uh, she has a great personality you know I think the biggest thing that you know we're looking for her is just to you know continue to kind of trampoline off of the year that she had last year um, you know she's not going to have the protection that she had with Tori Humphrey who was a former All-American hitting behind her in the five hole uh, or in the four last year she was hitting a three so you know that will you know, kind of probably have a little bit of effect on what kind of pitches that she's seen and some opportunities that she's going to have. So I think just, uh, you know, doing a little bit better job with some of her pitch selection and some swings. And we'd like to see her hit for a little bit more power, even though she's, you know, done that in the past. But uh, I think she led us in RBIs last year. But, you know, a little bit more power numbers there. But, uh, you know, just to continue to do what she's done the last couple of years for us will be, will be exciting to watch for sure. Speaking of trampolining off of past successes, last year winning the Mid-South Conference Championship. What sort of expectations internally does that put on the roster, on the coaches? Um, do you all discuss that sort of stuff? You know, we're very goal-oriented um, in what we're working toward in each season. You know, I think sure. in fall, uh, throughout the winter, and then as we start to start, as we start to begin the preseason and then into the season. And I think, you know, our goal is to always, you know, win the Mid-South Conference regular season, win a Mid-South Conference Championship. Um, you know, to, to play in an AI opening round, to go to the World Series. Um, you know, I think that's kind of where we're at uh, and a level of expectation to be ranked in the top 10 uh, consistently. You know, those are all things that are, uh, you know, you don't want to say the norm because anything can, can always happen. But there is a certain level of expectation that we've been able to build within our program. And, you know, I think these kids know that coming in. I think they know that throughout the recruiting process. That's why some of them are here. Um, you know, for a chance to compete for a national championship, to for a chance to compete at a high level. And, um, you know, we were fortunate last year. We were able to get all of our games in. And um, with with kids missing games and things like that, we were, we were still able to play. So that was really uh, something that was exciting for them after the previous year of losing our season and things like that. And then uh, just to have a chance, um, you know, I don't know how familiar you are, but we – we were really sitting in the second place or third place uh, right toward the middle of the conference season and uh, there was a tiny kind of opening right there that another team provided us and uh, we ended up winning out so we won uh, I think all 12 to 16 I think we went 16-0 the last set of our conference games or 12-0 and and were able to capture the a share of the Mid-South Conference regular season title uh, we were the number one outright seed due to a tiebreaker and then we were able to go over and uh, compete and, uh, at Lindsey Wilson and win the conference championship. So uh, it was really exciting for, for that group of kids and uh, for those seniors. And I thought that the kids just kind of came together and played hard. We swung the bats well last year. Uh, it was the highest batting average of any group that I've coached in the, the 18 years that I've been here. So <laughs> that was exciting. And uh, we were able to be effective in the circle as well. But it was just a really great team effort. And I think your expectations are – once again, the same. We, we lost two incredible kids that were super, super seniors, Amaya Aldridge and Tori Humphrey, but uh, we returned quite a bit mm -hmm. as well, and we returned all of our arms. So, you know, I think it's just 
where are we going to be better? What are we going to do a little bit better? And are we going to be able to be consistent enough to compete at a high level? Yeah. Well, best of luck this upcoming season. And we will be right back with more on Inside CU Sports. <laughs> <laughs> If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Thank you. Thank you. Oscar the Grouch here to tell you, yeah you, to wear a mask out in public around other people. Sure, it'll keep you healthy, but more importantly, I won't have to see your happy smiling face. <sighs> and if you don't want to wear a mask, I've just got one thing to tell you. Scram! Go away! <sighs> Caring for each other because we are all in this together. So wear a mask and have a rotten day, will ya? Mm. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's Smokey! It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. Next and next finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey Smokey, catch! Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Inside CU Sports. And as my final guest today, I have head coach of the men's wrestling team in his 18th season, Frankie James. Frankie, how are you doing? Doing good. Doing Thanks great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so just take me back chronologically. What led you, what was your journey like to see you and then uh, we'll, we'll start there. Yeah, the journey to see you, I started, like you said, 18 years ago. That was a long time ago I started. So yeah. uh, going back, I, you know, I, I coached at uh, a couple of Division I schools, uh, Virginia Military Institute and uh, University of Tennessee Chattanooga. And uh, uh, things were going great, but I got this offer to, to be a head coach and to start a program from scratch. and. Uh, it was a kind of a risky move because I was in a really good position at the D1 level and having a lot of success. So it was a risky move to leave and start a program from scratch at the NAI school. But uh, what a great decision 18 years later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a great <laughs> place to raise a family and uh, the, the university's grown and the program's just done great. So when you're able to yeah. create a program from scratch too, I'm sure that just en endears you even deeper into the program. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that, that's a, that was a big part of it. And then, you know, as soon as I got here, every year people thought I was leaving because I coached at D D1 before. Yeah. And uh, but you're right. When you start your own program from scratch, it, it does make you want to uh, keep keep it going. So, yeah. Uh, in the 18 years, compare your 18th year to to your first year what would you say to first year Frankie James probably just calm down a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah you know when you're a young coach especially you know, I was I don't know 30 years old as a head coach or something mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of energy there and I'm, I'm pretty amped up anyway so uh, sure. yeah just uh, the experience is nice to have yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> um, roster composition going up into this upcoming season. You have several returners, several incoming freshmen. Can you discuss kind of what the expectations for the team are? Yeah, we always expect our guys to win. <laughs> that's the that's that's yeah. thing. Uh, we, we expect <laughs> right. our guys to win. So uh, I don't think that's any different this year. And we have a, a very strong uh, core returning. Mm -hmm. And we actually, with it being a COVID year and not knowing how recruiting was going to play out we had a really good year mm -hmm. we hit a home run on a few guys so we expect probably there's going to be three or four uh, freshmen in our lineup that are going to be able to, to make a big impact so the team's going to be really strong you know all the way through the lineup and on the athletic side 
are strong, but in years past, also academically, they've uh, shown strength as well. Yeah, um, that's right. So equal parts, uh, academics and athletics for, for your athletes. Um, can you kind of discuss your coaching philosophy in, in that regard? Yeah, that, uh, speaking of starting a program from scratch and, and what we wanted to do, that was a big goal for me, uh, starting the program from scratch. I wanted to win a national title on the academic side and the wrestling side, and there's only been uh, one program in the history of college wrestling that's done that, mm -hmm. and that was uh, Nebraska Omaha. They won the academic national title and the wrestling national title in the same year. Nobody else done that. Yeah. So uh, that's something. That's just a, a huge goal that, that we tried to pursue. And we've gotten really close a few times. We finished third in the country in wrestling and like fifth in academics. Uh, 2009 or 2010, we won the academic national title. We were number one in the country in team GPA. Uh, we've been number two in team GPA. We've been in the top five uh, a bunch of times. So mm -hmm. we overall, our goal is to stay in that top 10 academically. But uh, uh, we'd also like to, to finish number one in the country in, in academics and wrestling. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a, that's a big goal, big part of the program. This. Mm -hmm. For this upcoming season, you all were able to bring in Travis McIntosh, a Campbellsville alum, and as an assistant coach. So what will Travis bring to the team? Yeah, speaking of uh, having you know that recruiting class being so, so strong and having new guys that are going to impact, uh, one of the biggest recruits was one of our own guys, which is Travis McIntosh, yeah. <laughs> getting him back here. He's went out in the coaching world and had a lot of success. So mm -hmm. he was setting himself up to, to go a lot of different directions, too, and he chose to come back to where he competed in college and, uh, and coach with us, and that was probably the biggest, or if not the biggest, definitely one of the biggest gets in that recruiting class, just having him come back as a coach. And he's we haven't even had our first official practice yet, and he's already had a huge impact. Mm -hmm. He's He's made our other coaches better. He's made everybody better. So he's he's doing a great job. Like you mentioned, first uh, first official practice next week, and then you are all's first uh, matches about a month away uh, at the Maryville Kaufman Brand Open. So what has the preparation been like on the coaches' side for the upcoming practice, and then that month leading up to the first matches? Yeah, there's just a lot of organizing and planning and getting things all laid out and prepared for what we're going to do, but. Uh, yeah, October 11th is the first official practice. Uh, a couple things we've done is we've had uh, recruiting days and uh, fall clinics. So we've had uh, we've had one of those already. We'll have another one this weekend. Mm -hmm. So there'll be uh, you know 30, 40, 50 kids here for the clinic, and then we'll have 10 to 20 uh, recruits here. So the, our wrestling room will be full on Saturday mm -hmm. all day. There'll be people here. We'll do a technique session in the morning. Then we'll have some live wrestling in the afternoon. And uh, those recruits will come and stay Friday night with our guys and uh, get to show them around. So, yeah, that's one of the things we do uh, just leading up to the season to get ready and to kind of hopefully we can sign three or four or five guys early in recruiting for wrestling. This will be early recruiting. And then after the season, all the state tournaments are in February. Once mm -hmm. those are over, we, we'll get the bulk of our recruits. But if we can get four or five guys signed early from these uh, fall clinics, that's a big jump to next year's recruiting class. For sure. Yeah. Well, best of luck to you and the team for this yeah. upcoming season coach yeah. and with your first official practice next week and we will be back next time with more inside cu sports